chased through the woods by Dogman. Dear Scary Stories NYC, this is a Dogman story for you, but it's also the true story of how I went from running on a treadmill at my gym to running outside in the fresh air to buying my own treadmill to run on at home. Before I begin, I feel I should mention that I have an uncle who once saw a dogman while hunting near Dudley, Pennsylvania. I had forgotten this when the events I'm about to describe happened, but I remembered his account of getting so close to the dogman that he smelled his rancid breath as I started to write down what happened to me last year here in New Jersey. If you don't mind, I'd like to tell you about his encounter first, and then I'll swing around and describe my far more recent sighting. Uncle Jasper was old when I was a kid, and he was retired from everything in life. About the only activity he still participated in was fishing, and I loved to join him out on his tiny boat out on the river behind his property. Don't ask me what river, I was very young and I simply don't remember. We didn't see any monsters there anyway, but that was the first time he told me about the time he ran into a dogman and almost didn't live to tell the tale. I think the reason I filed this sighting away in the back of my mind and never thought about it while I was having my own dogman experience is that Uncle Jasper never called what he saw a dogman. He called it a booger. He called it a mountain devil. He called it names that hunters usually call Bigfoot. But... I remember specifically that he said this wood booger had a giant, dog-like head. I never as a kid tried to actually picture what he was describing, but it must have looked just like the thing I saw that I'm going to tell you about later. I sort of filed the words away in a file cabinet in my brain, but I never took the time to imagine what a wood booger with a dog head might have looked like if I were seeing it with my own eyes for myself. So, the story was that Uncle Jasper was hunting a large buck. He was trailing the deer, trying to get in position to take the great animal down with one shot. Uncle Jasper lived off the land, but he never wanted animals to have to suffer any more than they absolutely had to. He wanted it over quickly, as he had a deep respect of life in all its forms. As he got the deer lined up in his shot, squinting through his scope, Suddenly, something stood up in his way, blocking his view. Dropping the eyepiece and weapon and looking with his naked eye, Uncle Jasper saw the big old wood booger standing not more than five feet in front of him, close enough to reach out and touch. With one swift arm movement, the werewolf-like beast sort of pushed the rifle out of Uncle Jasper's hands, and it went sailing over a bush, and out of his sight entirely. Unarmed and panicked, he took a step backward just as that big beast man took a step forward. Falling backward and landing hard on the ground, my uncle had all the wind knocked out of him. While he gasped desperately for air to refill his lungs, that dog-headed animal man leaned down, getting right in Jasper's face. He was breathing in the dogman's fetid breath, which made him nauseous. Choking and unable to get away, Uncle Jasper endured the nightmarish moment, knowing that giant dinosaur-headed mammal could end his existence with one bite to any number of different parts of him. Or he could choose to end his life slowly and painfully in a torturous fashion if he preferred that. Jasper was completely at the mercy of the dogman, and he closed his eyes, not wanting to see how it was all going to end. Soon, he noticed that the air tasted sweeter again, and opened his eyes to see that the dogman had slipped silently away. Sitting up, he was just in time to see that apex predator ambush the deer he'd been hunting. Grabbing the antlers and making one quick twist with his long, strong arms, the deer was snuffed out. According to Uncle Jasper, the dog-headed wood booger of Pennsylvania tossed that carcass over his back like it was a bag of laundry, and he trotted off into the woods with his prize, 
not even looking weighed down in the slightest. So there was a history in my family of such cryptid sightings and experiences, and I realize now that I did actually receive warnings in my youth to be careful in the woods. I guess I just never thought of New Jersey as the wilderness, and I didn't think that these creatures ever ventured so close to civilization. My uncle's story took place in the middle of nowhere, after all. Another thing is that, quite honestly, I wasn't sure if Uncle Jasper was really telling the truth. I'm not saying he was a liar, but adults tell a lot of stories to kids that aren't for real. Take Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny, for example. I thought maybe Uncle Jasper was just telling me a boogeyman story to keep me too scared to wander off into the woods and get lost. Now that I've filled you in on that backstory, I'm going to tell you about what happened to me years later in my adulthood. Starting around 2016, I began to find it harder to diet and keep weight off, so I joined the local gym. I discovered that running for 20 minutes twice a day helped me stay the size that I preferred to stay. Then the pandemic hit and my gym closed for a long time. At first I stayed home eating ice cream and comfort foods. Then I decided I'd become one of those guys who jogs out in public. I never had liked those people, I never wanted to become one of them. But I didn't want to get any heavier, so I became one of those people. At first, I found myself running around the neighborhood while others were leaving for their apparently essential jobs in the morning. I saw people giving me the same dirty looks I used to give others who ran around getting their sweat all over my nice working clothes. These people looked like they could smell my body odor even with their masks on, so I started going out earlier and earlier. I was living in Marlton, a suburb of Philadelphia over on the New Jersey side, and I was a 10-minute drive away from a nature area called the Black Run Preserve. Eventually, I switched to driving over to Black Run to do my jogging. If I ran into other people over there, it would usually be other runners like me. I left earlier each morning in pursuit of privacy, but one morning I left so early that it was really still night. And as I learned the hard way, nighttime is the right time for the dog man. Unlit passages through the woods are not good roads to run on, in the darkness, the forest feels like it's swallowing you up from all sides, and there's a sense of foreboding that can seize you up in fear before anything even happens. Or maybe that's only when there's a dogman hiding in the darkness, observing you. The path I was running down was supposed to be a bike path, but there were places where the pavement was so bumpy that you'd think you were running over craters on the moon. I nearly tripped a few times, then my ankle slid a bit on one unexpected incline and I hurt myself slightly. Nothing I would need to be hospitalized over, but I did need to stop and rub it and allow the pain to subside in its own time. At first, it hurt to put weight on the ankle, but I could tell I'd be okay in a few minutes as long as I kept the weight off of it. Leaning against a tree, I rubbed my ankle gently and listened to the crickets and cicadas screaming into the night and then they all started to quiet down until I didn't hear a single insect any longer looking around I wondered if that meant the Sun was coming up but it looked just as dark as before I wasn't hearing morning birds either I was just hearing quiet and then I heard a branch crack in the woods behind me Rubbing my ankle a bit faster, I could feel my heart beating harder in my chest. Someone, or something, was in those dark woods. Something with better night vision than I had. Something with an advantage over me. I gingerly tested my ankle, then started walking on it slowly, moving away from that area. I wasn't able to run yet, but I was making what progress I could to get myself away from whatever that was in that forest surrounding me. It was then that I heard foliage being pushed roughly aside and I observed an immense shadowy form emerge from the darkness, taking shape behind me on the path. 
I could only see it in silhouette at first, a shape roughly like that of a man, but a giant man, one twice as tall as I was at least, and it had what looked to me at first like two devil horns on top of its head. I saw two very evil, angry-looking eyes glowing underneath those apparent devil horns, and in my mind, I was face to face with the devil himself. An animal sound like growling mixed with snarling came my way out of this living darkness, and I backed away, unable to take my eyes off whatever it was I was looking at. I wanted to be anywhere but there. I never felt so helpless in my life. Even if my ankle weren't aching, there didn't seem to be a way to outrun a man that large. He could walk calmly and still overtake me with legs as long as his seemed to be. I also felt as though I were losing my mind. I had never believed in demons and devils. In fact, I had never even believed in anything except what the TV told me was real. I heard the large devil man breathing heavily in the darkness. He sounded like a bad smoker, and he also sounded very agitated. I was taking slow, measured steps backward, one after the other. The demonic thing was just standing there observing me. Then, something caused it to become even more agitated, and it took three quick bipedal steps forward standing directly under a moonbeam breaking through the tree cover. Suddenly, I could see what this was. No, it wasn't a demon, I suppose but my knees weakened at the sight of it, same as if it had been. I had to hold on to the tree to keep from dropping straight down to the forest floor because of what I was looking at. First of all, those devil horns on top of its head were ears, tall, pointed dog ears. Its glowing eyes and massive rows of fangs inside a long snout defined the creature as some form of canine, possibly a wolf. Its upright posture and huge wall-to-wall -wall chest seemed to be telling me that it was some kind of giant human. It was wrapped in a gray sort of wolf-like fur, I suppose, thinner on the chest and belly, but pretty thick elsewhere. The gray was darker on the face and ears lightening out by the cheeks. I don't really remember other details. Sometimes I dream about it and it's striped. Other times it has a solid gray coat. It's possible that even my subconscious didn't make note of the body fur. So focused was I upon its face, its glowing eyes, its inhuman-looking ears, and terrifyingly feral and prehistoric-looking fangs. My eyes teared up, making it harder to see. I remember the feeling that this was so unfair. If I had known something like this existed in New Jersey, I wouldn't have been out running in the woods before dawn. Why hadn't anyone ever told me that this monster might have been here waiting for me? It sounds infantile, I know, but that's what I reverted to in that instant. I felt certain that I wasn't going to survive this encounter. All the rest of the very important things I had planned to do that day suddenly were revealed to not matter at all. Not even slightly. Whether I returned those emails today or not suddenly seemed so completely trivial. Cleaning the apartment, tying up loose ends in my personal life, I realized that I would never get to do these things. And what's more, it absolutely did not matter. The only thing that mattered was how badly it was going to hurt if and when I got attacked by that giant dog-headed creature man. I needed a plan because I knew I couldn't outrun him, even if my ankle were at 100%. Still, I mentally prepared myself to be ready to run hard, ankle or no ankle, because obviously that was going to have to be our last resort. The dogman took one more step in my direction, and I mirrored him, moving back an equal distance with three or four steps. His movement that second time was more tentative than his first advance, I wondered what that was telling me. I was never good at psychology. I remember looking around, trying to find some means of defense or offense in the surrounding environment. 
I'd like to say I deduced how to create gunpowder from things lying around on the ground and created a cannon to fire on the dogman with, the way Captain Kirk would have done. But in truth, I was panicked and shaking all over, finding it a bit hard to think clearly and harder still not to scream and run away. The dogman maintained his distance, faking advances and retreats at odd intervals, apparently just to see what I would do in reaction. Mostly what I did was I stalled for time to think of something to do. Having failed to find a means of defense, I realized I didn't really know anything about my adversary. Was it an intelligent, like a man? Or did it think in a manner closer to the way a canine thinks? Probably best to assume it possessed versions of both kinds of intelligence. That realization just made me panic further. I desperately needed a plan, yet all I had been able to come up with was to keep backing very slowly away from the giant upright dog, larger than any bear I'd ever seen. I wondered if it wanted to scare me off, or if it wanted to eat me. The huge canine drooled onto the forest floor, and I realized I had my answer. Meanwhile, the dogman was becoming increasingly agitated, shifting its weight from foot to foot, sometimes doing this impatient dance of a step to the side, a step backward, and then a step back into the original position. It was looking at me from the side, making a squeaking whine sound punctuated by its puckering its dog mouth as though threatening to bark or howl, but never actually going ahead and doing it. I used to have a Dalmatian that did that kind of dance on its hind legs if I was taking too long making its dinner. It freaked me out when I realized the similarities. It's almost as though I were holding his favorite frisbee and tormenting him by not throwing it for him to bite into. The problem was that I had a strong feeling that in this case, the frisbee was me. The more agitated the dogman became, the more frantic he became as well. It was almost like there were an invisible wall between us. He was waiting for me to do something, and then he was going to burst into violent action, I knew that. I just wanted to figure out what he wanted me to do so that I could make sure not to do it. Again, my adrenaline-soaked brain was misfiring and having difficulties making connections. I heard a sound like people talking from far behind me. The dogman looked away from me and down the road at something. I turned around to see a man and a woman jogging together coming toward us down the bumpy moon road. I realized the sky had begun to lighten up. Dawn had arrived. As I turned back around, I saw the dogman was already completely gone. I wasn't even sure which direction he had disappeared in. I never even heard leaves rustling in any direction, so I had no clue where he went. The jogging couple waved to me as they passed, and I waved back as I recommenced running in the direction that they were coming from. All that time I was searching for a plan to save myself, and it turned out all I needed was Dex Ex Machina to rescue me in the end. I needed to stall as long as I could, and then I needed to get really lucky. Simple, right? I was paranoid the entire way out of the park, wondering if that dogman was trailing me in the woods just behind me. It was pretty bright out by the time I got back to my car, and the entire thing started to feel like just a bad nightmare, but the worst nightmare I'd ever had. What I mean to say is, I was shaken up, really rattled by the experience, and yet, it felt as though it hadn't actually been real. I felt sort of guilty and embarrassed for having been traumatized by something so surreal and absurd. None of the people in my immediate life would empathize with me if I told them I felt like I needed counseling over this very strange event in my life. It's like hiring a psychiatrist because you had a bad dream. Nevertheless, I keep thinking that I wish I had a person to talk to about this that would keep the conversation private. And after all, that is the definition of a therapist of any sort. Maybe I can do it and keep it a secret from the people around me. If my Uncle Jasper were still alive, I could have spoken to him about it. 
He was a much braver man than the one I've grown up into becoming. I lacked the courage to go public with what happened to me the way he did. On the other hand, Uncle Jasper was retired when he told me his stories. Maybe if I manage to have a comfortable retirement, I'll be braver like he was back in my childhood. Anyway, as you can imagine, the Dogman was the reason I went online and bought my own indoor treadmill to run on. I feel like a hamster on a wheel when I could be out in nature breathing the air and getting free vitamin D. The thing is, I'm still really not over the whole Dogman experience that I had out there. It hasn't just made me paranoid about running into that creature again, but it's damaged my internal navigation as well, at least temporarily. Even if I walk around in the city, I flinch at every loud noise and I feel nervous all the time. I'm not expecting the dogman to jump out at me in the city, but I am concerned about muggers and robbers and that sort of thing. I never used to be like that. I guess I'm going to have to seek professional help in order to move past the time that I was <laughs> chased through the woods by Dogman. Of all our channel members, here's the newest one yet. Just joined up, so remember, they're called Jordan's Cadet. Please join us in thanking Jordan's Cadet for making this episode possible. They are our newest channel member, having joined at the $3 level. That entitles them to see our weekly Sunday Secret Uncensored Stories, plus our 21 hours of archived Secret Uncensored Stories that hopefully I remember to put up a new post with those archive links in on the community page before uploading this video. If you'd like to see our Secret Uncensored episodes plus our other perks, you can join our PayPal subscribers club at peterbernard.com or do what Jordan's Cadet did and click the join link under this or any of our videos to become a channel member. And now, here's our spokes dog Henry Lee Dogman to fill in any details I may have left out. Hank? Thanks for watching till the end. If you liked what you saw, please consider clicking like on the video or sharing it with your friends and family that you think might also be interested. If you would like to see more of our work, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon next to the subscribe button so that YouTube will alert you when we put out a new video. To become a channel member and gain access to our special perks, you can click that join link under each of our videos. Another option is to join our PayPal subscribers club at peterbernard.com. You can join for as little as 99 cents on YouTube or a buck 50 at peterbernard.com and that gains you access to our weekly secret uncensored episodes. If you'd like to see our 21 hours of archives of uncensored Dogman stories, then please join at the $3 level or above. To get to watch our shows in advance of the public, please join at our $10 level. That gets you all the perks. We're working on figuring out how to add the $10 level to the PayPal Club too. If you join our channel memberships, you need to check our community page here on YouTube in order to get the links to the secret videos and other perks. If you're in the PayPal Subscribers Club, Peter will email you all the news and links himself. Once joining the PayPal Club, which is Peter's homemade club, please give him a chance to see that you've joined and to compose you a personal welcome email, as none of that is automated. But whichever you join, we'll name you an executive producer for the next available episode. Do you have a scary experience that you'd like to share with us? You can email us at scarystoriesnyc at gmail.com or call our Scary Stories voicemail hotline at 804 lascary That's 804-537-2279. It's a Google voicemail box, so that means it keeps cutting off after every three minutes. If your story is longer than that, Please keep calling back, and we can piece it together on our end. Good night, and have a scary tomorrow. Come back for more. Scary, scary stories. stories.